Hey guys, happy new year and welcome to 2016. I got a few questions asking about what a typical day is like for a software engineer and I really can't do this question justice in just one video. I'm gonna start a series about this stuff and just talk about all the things I've encountered and learned through my very short career. We can cover everything from your day-to-day -day engineering life to building relationships and problems you might encounter. If you have any specific questions, just ask me in the comments and I'll answer them, all right? First, I just wanna give a quick rundown of my background. I'm not really a veteran, but I have been doing this for a little bit. I graduated in 2009 and my very first job was at Qualcomm in San Diego and I was working in their mobile chipset department. I wrote really, really low-level code, device drivers, firmware for about two years. Right around two years, I was getting a little tired of C and device drivers, so I switched departments to Qualcomm's research and development. We worked on much higher level software. This is where I learned a lot of my C++ and we were working on really abstract kind of R&D ideas. During R&D, my team was working on a cool way to simulate neural networks and potentially make a chip that could simulate neural networks very efficiently. It was like this cool intersection of engineering and hardcore science. Okay, after two years of that in R&D, I started slowly getting interested in startups a little bit. You know, it's kind of like a itch on the back of your head that you have to scratch. Okay, so after about four years at Qualcomm, I decided to just pack up my stuff and move over to New York City where I started at my first startup. I learned a lot of new stuff at the startup. It was definitely a lot of new technologies that I hadn't really used at Qualcomm, new languages, etc., etc. About a year and a half in, I realized I wasn't as passionate anymore about what we were building, so I decided to actually move on to a different company. So only about four months ago, just last August 2015, I joined a recycling startup where my old college roommate was working at. We're trying to be like the next generation of recycling and garbage in the US. It's a really old industry and they haven't really seen the light of day in terms of technology. So that, that's my whole professional history up to right now. Hopefully I sound credible enough so Let's just start with the advice now. First thing I wanna go over is a couple demographics because this video is definitely for a target audience. It might not be for you. This video is for software engineering for a new grad or junior developer at a large corporation. And when I say large, I mean on the order of thousands of people like Amazon, Microsoft, Google, those kind of companies. If you fall into this category, then this video is for you. And again, with everything I say, this is just my opinion of what I've been through. So please, please don't take any of this as fact. Today, we're just gonna cover two points to kick off these series and let's get started with the first one, all right? The first thing that you have to be prepared for is to do some shitty tasks. On the outside, the company might be very glamorous. You can see all the cool bean bags on the Google website, but for a new grad just joining, the work is not glamorous. It is not glamorous. My one piece of advice for this is just to mentally prepare yourselves to be able to do a little bit of crappy work because there's really no way around it. For every 10 tasks you might receive at these large corporations, especially when you're a new grad, there's only gonna be one out of 10, which is a kind of a cool task to do but the majority of them are gonna be really, really crappy. The company could decorate them up and make them sound really important and make you and your work be like, yeah, this is good, we really need you to do this, but in actuality, they're gonna be giving you some crappy work to start off with. So there's a purpose to this whole thing. The point of giving you a crappy assignment that maybe no one else really wants to do is to vet you as an engineer and see how well you can solve an easy problem. If you do a lot of the crappy tasks well, you'll quickly move on to much cooler tasks, but if you don't do a very good job, you might be stuck doing some shitty work. My first project at Qualcomm when I was a new grad was to get a bunch of this code compiling using a ton of make files that nobody cared about. 
It's something that no one else wanted to do, so obviously they give it to a new grad. If you're an engineer, you probably know what make files are. They're not the prettiest thing, and pretty much I toiled away at that for like my first month or so. Anyways, point number one is just be prepared to take on some crappy work. Okay, so the second point I wanna make is how to ask questions well. Once you're in a corporate life, people are very, very busy, and I can almost guarantee you that not many people will have time to kind of babysit you around. You're probably gonna have a mentor assigned for you, which is awesome, but don't expect that mentor to be really having some one-on-one -on -one time with you every day. At a big company, you're definitely gonna have a lot of resources. And when I say resources, it's everything from your coworkers to the tools that the company has developed to all the documentation that they've written. It's your responsibility to use your resources well at a large company. And one way of doing this is asking good questions. Do not, I repeat, do not ask the same question twice. It's a really bad look for an engineer. You have to form a really good question, ask it, somebody will give you a good answer and it's your responsibility to take that and learn from it. You don't wanna be the guy or girl that keeps IMing people saying, oh, how do you do this? And then one week later, it's the same exact question. It's really bad. Does this question make sense? Is there no other way I can figure it out? What other dependencies does this question have? Just take a step back and really understand what you don't know and try to fill in as many holes as you can. Don't ask another engineer for their help without doing your homework. It definitely shows and as a new grad at this huge company, it's really not a good look, all right? All right guys, that's the end of the video for today with the two major points. Mentally prepare yourself to get some crappy work and also make sure you ask your questions well to utilize your resources, all right? Um, I hope this is helpful. This is just the first video in this series and I really wanna, I guess, talk about a lot of the things you might encounter as a software engineer. If you have any specific questions, just ask me in the comments and I'll answer it in the next video. Please give me a like or a thumbs up and I will see you guys next time, all right? Have a good week.